Yo yo, how's it going bros, my name is Nodby and if you're new here just want to let you know that I post videos every single day doing that daily grind boy I also post more parts of the same manhwa and I also answer to 99% of all the comments and if that's not enough subscribe now to go for today and enjoy in the video Our protagonist's name is Shen Yi and he's a 23 year old guy who just left school to work at an intern job He's completely dissatisfied with the job because they always make him work extra hours and it feels more like a full time job than an internship and he thinks that he should have focused on studies more while in school so he could have had a better career instead of this one. As he's walking home from his work, he's thinking about the food he ordered and at that moment he meets the guy delivering his food but realizes that the guy got the wrong order too which makes Shen even more displeased. As he reaches his apartment and tries to enter it, he realizes that the door got stuck which just adds to his frustration and to make things worse, even the light bulb goes goes out but instead of getting more angry about this he actually gets scared because he heard some whispering voice saying an infinite misfortune exterminate that which is lost what's exterminated of the smooth ashes and at first, Shen thinks he's hallucinating, but realizes that this voice is too real to be a hallucination, so he figures out it must be a ghost haunting his house, as the voice continues, Blood, Blood. Flesh, Flesh, Witch, Witch. Shen shakes in fear as he turns around telling this ghost that it has the wrong guy, but the whispers continue, Manifest, Grand Person. Bring forth the fear of the world. Shen is completely shocked now, not realizing what's going on, and in that moment a lightning strikes. And we see another image of a cult and their leader sitting on a throne, continuing the cantation Shen recently heard, saying to the mighty Lord of Ashes, we offer forth a sacrifice, as we see the sacrifice being a beautiful girl tied up and scared because she doesn't want to be killed. The leader of this cult continues the cantation, and as the girl is crying, underneath her appears a huge glowing circle, which even surprises the leader of this cult, because he's been trying to summon the Lord of the Ashes for hundreds of years, and this is the first time that summoning is actually working. The cult members get ecstatic as they chant, be full, be full, be full. The cult members then start leaving the room to leave the sacrifice alone with the Lord of the Ashes. As you see a portal appearing and the girl completely shook looks at the portal and we see a demon come out from the portal with a huge ash cloud surrounding him. The girl trembles and utters, Lord of the Ashes? As the heat increases and she starts sweating, we see Shen emerging from the ash cloud and just as he sees this girl thinking this is the ghost that whispered to him a couple of moments ago, he gets a nosebleed and yells OPPAI GHOST. And bros, if you don't know what OPPAI means, basically it means breasts and don't ask me how I know this please. Shen then realizes she doesn't really look like a ghost though and decides to untie her thinking that a beautiful girl like this one could never have evil intentions and as he was untying her he realized that she is so sweaty and he thinks that she might be ill. He tries to wake her up and in a shy manner ask her if she'd like him to take her to a hospital and as she sees him she immediately falls in prostration calling him the grand lord of the ashes. Shen now confused more than ever comments how she has the wrong guy and how people always get confused when they see him. The girl lifts her head up, continuing to praise Shen and calls herself his devout follower, saying that she could never mistake her lord of the ashes like that. This keeps Shen confused as he asks her what kind of a being does she think he is and she answers in admiration saying that he's a majestic and grand being impossible to describe. And as we see her perspective as she's looking at Shen, we realize she doesn't actually see Shen as he normally looks like and as we see him, but she sees a demon that emerged from the portal when the portal first opened, meaning that she and probably the people 
people of this world see Shen like that. Bros, you recommended this manhwa to me and I'm already getting Mr. Lin vibes where they mistake our protagonist for some more powerful kind of entity and I like it. This leaves Shen flattered as he comes closer to her and asks her if she really is certain that she didn't mistake him for someone else. And him getting this close to her makes this girl faint and Shen thinks how maybe this is some kind of a trap but decides to help her by giving her a cup of hot coffee. He then thinks that by being an otaku and knowing a lot of manga and anime, he understands what this is and he might have been transmigrated to another world and became someone else. The girl then peeks at Shen while blushing and he realizes that this probably isn't a trap and he actually got transported to another world where people see him as some demon lord. Shen then approaches this girl telling her that there's no need to fear him and asks for her name which leaves her completely shocked and blushing as she answers firstly by praising him and then after saying that her name is Aina. Shen decides to keep pretending to be this demon lord and tells Aina again that there's no need to fear him as he offers her a cup of coffee with a pleasant smile on his face. But what Aina sees is a cup with boiling lava in it and thinks maybe that this is the way the Lord of Ashes takes his sacrifices. She grabs the cup saying that she's offering her life to her lord and this surprises Shen as he asks Aina about more info about her and how she summoned him here. Aina shakes in fear saying that she was a sacrifice offered to summon him and Shen immediately realizes that this world probably has some kind of a cult that uses human sacrifices to summon this Lord of Ashes but how instead of this Lord of Ashes they accidentally summoned him now. The portal starts closing and as Shen realizes he's being teleported back he orders Aina to properly and carefully live on. And as he leaves, his words echo in Aina's mind, leaving her completely speechless and remembering the moment she got kidnapped by this cult and convinced that she needs to be a sacrifice. She starts crying and thinking how she needs to properly live on in order to follow the will of her lord. Lord of Ashes. She now looks at the cup of the boiling lava in front of her and thinks how the Lord of Ashes rarely offers his favor like this to his sacrifices. And as she's wondering what might be the reason he spared her life now, she thinks that maybe the Lord of Ashes likes smaller girls. Mmm, you being small is kinda sus, but okay. Aina then picks up and lifts the cup of the boiling lava and she can see a magic barrier around her and as she walks out in the rain, she realizes that as soon as the rain touches the barrier, it immediately evaporates and Aina thinks this is one of the blessings given to her by Lord of Ashes. And as she's walking the rainy streets, she thinks how she was never free like this before because she was always treated like a sacrifice. As she's wandering the city, she spots a strange place with an unusual aura and as she wonders what might this be, she decides to head back to the place where the cult is located. As she leaves, we go inside of this place and see a portal opening and Shen coming out of it wondering what this place is, but unfortunately for him, he came out upside down, fell on his head and fainted. When he wakes up the next day, he realizes that he got teleported to a coffee shop, but thinks how he's still not back on earth, but probably still in the world where he previously got transmigrated to. As he's looking at a huge photo of the owner of this coffee shop, a woman passes by Shen and in a condescending way orders a coffee from him. Shen gets surprised because she was ordering coffee from him and he thinks so people have yet again confused him for someone else, this time for an employee of this coffee shop, but he decides to help out and serve coffees until the boss arrives, so maybe he'll even get a job offer then. Another lady, also in a condescending voice, orders him to make a coffee for her, 
but I guess compared to Mr. Lin, Shen is a complete simp who blushes and accepts the order. As the time keeps on passing and passing, he keeps getting some weird customers like these crazy jacked bodybuilders. Now almost at the end of the shift, he thinks how life can be really unpredictable and as he leaves the cup of coffee he's been cleaning, he realizes that the boss still didn't come and if Shen leaves now, all his hard work today will be in vain. He decides to sleep in this coffee shop because there is a comfy bed and some food in it. So he thinks he'll take that as his salary for today. Now we see the cult members knocking on a door and a blonde haired guy, similar to the picture of Shen's coffee shop boss, opens the door asking if that's the person that will undergo the remolding operation. Cult members answer that yes she is and we see this person being Aina. Now we see Aina follow the blonde haired guy to the underground room as she wonders what exactly will they do to her when they say they'll remold her. After reaching the operating room, the blonde haired guy orders cult members to leave them alone but also to leave the burning blood, which I was mistakenly calling hot lava cup bros, so I'm sorry. Now after they get in, the man locks up Aina on the operating table and starts ripping her clothes off. Then he gives her an anesthetic and we can see it hurts Aina a little bit and the man then tells her they'll wait for the anesthetic to start working and when it does, remolding will begin. He then opens up the container with the burning blood and gets completely shocked after seeing how much and how high quality is the burning blood and gets bummed out a bit because he thinks Lord of Ashes likes silver eyed and haired people and he gets bummed out about it because he's blonde. But then he comforts himself by saying that maybe the Lord of Ashes likes small girls. He then explains Aina that they will try to make her a child of this lord and this confuses her a little bit and the man explains that she will not literally become the child of Lord of Ashes but rather become of a higher rank in this order as he explains that every order has their own way of producing a child of lord but how the most common one is by injecting the burning blood which will give its recipient superhuman powers and this kind of sounds like tainted blood Miss G has flowing through her veins as well. He then tells her that the remolding can be done anywhere, but why it's being done here to her is because the rich people that finance their cult want to see her go through the pain of remolding. He then explains how everyone here would actually want to be in her place, but how she was chosen by Lord of Ashes to transcend humanity and become the first child of the Lord. He then takes out a needle with burning blood in it and injects it into Aina's vein as we can see her feeling immense pain and her veins flare up from receiving this burning blood. She clenches her fist in pain and starts screaming as blood comes out of her mouth and then she faints because the pain was so unbearable. Blondie here thinks that the experiment is a failure and that Aina died and then starts thinking how Lord of Ashes might like blonde people more after all. Then suddenly Aina remembers Shen's words but she remembers them being said by Lord of Ashes and the words being that she must live on as she starts regaining her consciousness. Now we go back to the coffee shop where Shen is working as we catch him slipping and thinking about this girl but but he realizes if he wants to be a sigma male, he needs to stop thinking about girls he has no chance with. He also remembers this cult tying her with those weak ropes and thinks how they cannot be some serious cult with those weak ropes. As the rain outside starts falling harder, Shen again starts hearing the whispers, palm of creation overflowing with life, enemy of ashes with heavenly fog as he realizes he's being summoned again. As Shen realizes he's being summoned again, he wonders if the Oppai girl will be there again and if you don't know what the Oppai girl is, I'm sorry but you'll have to watch part 1, I'm not explaining it again, no way. Anyways, as he's waiting for the summon to happen, with the most excitedly handsome face ever, he feels a sharp pain in the chest as he lies down on the bed and he wonders that maybe this pain is punishment because he pretended to be the lord they all adore so much but he wasn't. 
As we see some kind of magical power appear in his hand, Shen thinks that maybe the heat he felt in the chest got transferred to his hand now and he feels his hand being so hot now that he thinks he could even cast flames from it if he willed. He decides to try it out and as he extends his hands and yells Crimson Blaster, flames actually do start emitting from his hand. And not just any old tiny flames, but the entire room gets covered in them, so much so that this even leaves Shen surprised, as he never expected it to be as powerful as it just happened right now. He withdraws the flames back, thinking how this actually really worked. He tries it a couple more times to test if he can actually do it whenever he wants, and he actually can. He smirks and flexes, thinking how he's been reborn into an all-powerful being now, as he creates a flaming head of his favorite VTuber in front of him, and then immediately faints after seeing her like that. He tries to manipulate the form of the flame now, and he can do that as well, writing letters and be out of flame. He then picks up a book and tries to burn it, casting a big flame onto it, but after the flame goes out, the book remains intact which disappoints him because his flames are so weak they can't even burn a single book. I mean he should be happy because of that because if they could burn the book down then he could burn his entire room and the building he was in a couple of moments ago because the flames engulfed his entire room bros. Now we go back to our blondie boy who still thinks that Aina is dead and thinks how he'll deal with her later as he leaves the room but just then Aina follows him out of the room still tired from the remolding process, telling him that she succeeded and survived the transformation, leaving this blondie doctor in shock. He then approaches her and gets excited because they've managed to create the first son of the Lord. Aina realizes that her chances of survival must have been really really low since he got so excited for her survival and thinks how she managed to survive thanks to the Lord of Ashes. This thought makes her blush as the doctor tells it's time for the next step of the ritual. Now we go back to the coffee shop where Shen is preparing coffees for his customers and thinking how a month passed since he came to this world but he still didn't see the boss of this coffee shop and how the only reason he's staying here is because he has nowhere to go right now but since the boss isn't around he feels as if he is the boss of this coffee shop and thinks how it feels nice to be a boss. But no matter how nice it feels, Shen wants to go back home as soon as possible. He takes a sip of his coffee and yells how he wants to go back so he can watch more of Alice's videos, Alice being the VTuber mentioned a little bit earlier. He then starts hearing summoning whispers again, but after only a couple of seconds they go silent as he thinks how this must be some kind of a joke, thinking how his father's Dutch oven lasts more than this summoning cantation. Hey, my boy has some jokes. He thinks how he's heard this cantation many times now throughout the period of the last month and he's learned seven different speeches for the summoning, meaning there are seven different cults that are trying to summon him as he thinks that after being summoned for the first time he didn't mind it because he could lay his eyes on that oppie girl but if he was summoned in front of a cultist group and they realize he's not actually the lord they are trying to summon they would probably kill him on the spot. He then remembers hearing from his customers about a university close to where he lives. Uh, the university name is Bedern Imperial College. So he thinks they must have some Opai professors working there. I mean, the knowledge. They have the knowledge to explain all the mysteries that have been happening to him recently. He then hears the cantation yet again. And if he remembers the words correctly, he was summoned by that beautiful girl the last time after he hearing these words and this summon incantation. Then a portal appears and sucks him in as we see another lightning strike and the rain starts falling heavily. We go back just 10 minutes into the past and we see some cultist member reciting these words and trying to summon the Lord of Ashes as we see people bowing down in prostration behind him and behind them, behind the tinted window, we can see the rich folks who want to see this Lord appear 
so they have a reason to keep funding this cult more. This cultist thinks how after the Lord of Ashes comes, a huge catastrophe will befall the world, but nothing bad happened after he came the last time. And this cultist thinks it's maybe because he liked Aina so much. Aina comments how they should bring the relic that was mentioned by High Priest before and explains how Anti-Magic Bureau mission is to keep normal people from coming in contact with these powerful magical relics. Cultist then starts chanting the summoning words again and we see candles go out but then he gets disappointed because all he can hear is silence now and he can't hear the rain that was falling outside. He wonders about what Aina mentioned before but thinks this can't be true because in the last millennia Lord of Ashes only came twice but that even if what she said was true there's no way for him to appear twice in such a short time as Aina lifts her head up and utters Lord of Ashes and we see the summoning circle starting to glow intensely, scaring the cultist as another portal appears, making Aina and the rich folk spectating happy as they yell that Lord of Ashes has appeared as we see him actually appearing in front of them this time. Cultists get petrified after seeing Lord of Ashes while Aina looks at him curiously wondering why she gets the privilege to see her lord twice. We can see ashes and a bright light emitting from all sides as the cult leader falls down begging the Lord of Ashes to not be angry with them now and to forgive them for summoning him. And then we see Shen feeling a little bit awkward and saying he's not angry, just a little bit uneasy. He then wonders if he'll get exposed right away this time since there's more people around here now and not just the Oppai girl like the last time, but his face gets utterly surprised as he lays eyes on the same Oppai girl from the last time. He admires her clothes. Mm -hmm. I also like to admire women's clothes by looking at the design of it around the chest area, right? Right bros, are you with me? <laughs> he also thinks how Aina's face is really cute as he says out loud that the oracle that he issued the last time came into effect and that was expected of him and these words leave cult members confused not realizing what the Lord of Ashes is saying because his voice was so quiet and the cult leader doesn't dare asking Lord of Ashes to repeat his words again because he fears this Lord might just take his life on spot so he realizes that the next best thing he can do right now is to offer the sacrifices and try to change the subject to something else. They then tell Shen, yo this is so hard to say, they then tell Shen, they then tell Shen, okay not, not, not that hard but a little bit confusing, anyway they tell Shen that they are offering him the magical and powerful relic, the mask of change unbonded and this leaves Shen confused because he doesn't understand why they are all so frightened and realizes that the guy in front of other cult members must be their leader so Shen decides it would be for the best for him to keep his distance from this guy so the cult leader doesn't recognize Shen being an imposter. Shen thinks how this cult leader started crying after seeing this so-called Lord of Ashes and thinks that if he's so obsessed with this Lord, just imagine what he would do to Shen when he finds out Shen is an imposter. And then we see this guy, he's actually thinking how Lord of Ashes doesn't want to respond to them and how he must be angry and will just kill them all right now and that's why he broke into tears and bros let the misunderstandings begin. Shen decides to be careful and play along, calling them foolish mortals, but saying that he'll accept their offers, but decides not to go down among them because it would be too dangerous. And at that moment, the mask starts levitating and this surprises Shen as he takes the mask and this surprises cultists because they think how their sacrifice is worthy and that the Lord of Ashes accepted it. And then we see that from their perspective, flames lift up the mask closer to this demon lord, flames he conjured, but of course Shen doesn't know this. 
cult leader starts praising Lord of Ashes and starts crying even more vigorously, if crying can even be done in a vigorous way, but he does it because he thinks the Lord of Ashes isn't mad at them anymore and he'll spare their lives now. But now he wonders why the Lord of Ashes is still among them and wonders what he could be thinking about. And then he gets scared, thinking that maybe Lord of Ashes is trying to decide what calamities to release upon their world. But the cult leader decides to praise Lord of Ashes more and says that he accepts his divine decree. Suddenly, we hear Aina's voice as she calls for the Lord of Ashes herself. She claims that these cult leaders are not actually his followers, but are here only for the prophet and how they don't really follow his commands. Cult leader gets petrified as he yells at Aina, telling her to shut her mouth, calling her a worthless orphan, and that's an insult I guess, calling her a worthless orphan who knows nothing about dignity and only gets passed around by the guys here. Mm if I'm understanding this correctly, but I mean, Aina is pretty... Oh, never mind, let's go back to... I'm sorry, bros. I'm just being observative here. Anyway, Aina gets angry as well now as she grabs her left oppai, I mean, left heart, a heart, there is only one heart on the left, saying that she's not like that, and then the flame starts spreading around as Lord of Ashes yells that if they are violating her oracle like that, they deserve to get punished horribly. Cultists lose their mind in fear as we see Shen's face angry as well, thinking how they are still treating Aina without respect, and he starts conjuring humongous flames from his hand that form a dragon and yells that she is his oracle and will live her life the best way possible and that they will never treat her bad again. Cult leader then gets a vision of literal hell and him and his cult members burning in it, making him even more petrified as Shen asks him if he understood his order. The oracle yells completely scared that he understands the new orders and will follow them humbly and completely. As the portal starts closing and teleporting Shen back, he tells them to stop summoning him for no reason. Aina is left surprised as she thinks that Lord of Ashes isn't an evil being after all. She thinks that even though whenever Lord of Ashes appears in this world, some calamities happen as well, it's not because he's an evil being, but because the world can't withstand his power and just starts collapsing, and how in no way is the Lord of Ashes himself actually evil. The cult leader rejoices, saying that the Lord of Ashes is gone, as we see cult members losing their mind in disbelief because they just witnessed the Lord of Ashes appear in front of them. The blondie doctor runs in yelling and asking what is going on and why is everyone acting like madmen as the cult leader explains that they have to leave this place immediately now because there's a lot of magical activity left behind and how the anti-magic bureau is probably on their way to inspect what is going on here. So they need to leave now to save their sponsors from getting into trouble, while Blondie Doc is still confused and yelling, asking for an explanation. We see cult leader's eyes turn purple as he orders Blondie Doc to kneel as the doctor feels magical sensations running through his body and realizes that he made a mistake for grabbing the Grand Priest's robe like that, especially because this priest has a risk rating of disaster. The cult leader then tells the doctor that Aina is the only person that can truly understand the Lord of Ashes and as Aina blushes, the cult leader continues explaining that she was born exclusively for the sake of Lord of Ashes. He then orders Aina to follow him and her blushiness changes to fear now. As she stands up, cult leader orders his followers to treat Aina as a divine being from now on and show her respect whenever they see her from now on, and he turns to Aina telling her he'll personally help her carry out the divine purpose and the mission that Lord of Ashes has left upon them, his trustworthy apostles. Aina clenches her fist and angrily answers that she doesn't need his instructions. Now a week passes and we see a new guy who wonders about the aura of Lord of Ashes as he's sitting in a coffee shop where Shen works and is also wondering about Shen as well and as Shen approaches him and asks him 
what kind of a coffee would he like to drink, the man orders a black coffee and as Shen is leaving, he senses a strange aura coming from Shen as well, as if he has some connections to Lord of Ashes himself. He wonders who Shen is actually and if he came here to stop him. As Shen is preparing this coffee, he thinks how finally this shop is receiving customers and how if it didn't, Shen would end up on the street and how ironic it would be for Lord of Ashes to be homeless because he can't afford to pay his utility bills. As he serves this man his coffee, the man realizes that there is not a single trace of aura he felt a moment ago around Shen now thinking that maybe he got mistaken somehow. He slurps the coffee in a single gulp, leaving Shen surprised because the coffee was hot, but this man now thinks that this is just a regular coffee and not some kind of a potion. Shen then notices a jar filled with paper cranes and the man tells Shen that all of these were made by his daughter, explaining that each of these cranes contain a wish his daughter has written on it. Shen laughs, commenting that his daughter has many wishes and the man tells him that the plan was that whenever he has some free time, he would take paper cranes out one by one and go do activities and wishes his daughter has, but he never got the chance to do it because he never had free time and he explains that now his daughter has passed away and Shen grabs his shoulder saying that he's sorry to hear that, explaining that he also knows what it feels like to lose friends and family, but how one mustn't dwell on the past and needs to learn to let go in order to not start causing self-harm, which even those deceased family members wouldn't like. Ooh, my boy is using Mr. Lin's soul healing words, let's go. The man now thinks how some thoughts will always lurk in his mind and the only way to stop them is death. As he looks at Shen, thinking that if Shen is going to stand in his way and try to stop him, the only way is to take his head. As Shen with a dull face explains that everyone has their own way of mourning. The man thinks that Shen might not be in his way after all and then introduces himself, saying his name is Byron Anhalt. As he leaves the shop, Shen encourages him to come again anytime. And as he's leaving the coffee shop wondering more about Shen, Shen rushes out stopping Byron and Byron thinks that maybe Shen will make a move on him now. As Shen apologizes and says that Byron still didn't pay, so Byron feels a little bit awkward now and pays. And because Shen asked for money, his goal mustn't really be to stop Byron is what Byron thinks now. And as he's walking away, he thinks thinks how he wouldn't hesitate using Lord of Ashes' followers as a sacrifice for his own lord and how tonight he'll tap into the taboo realm of sorcery to summon back and revive his deceased daughter. We see Shen sitting in his room and reading a book and studying to learn more about this Lord of Ashes that everyone thinks he is when they summon him. He learns that this lord is made of fire and continuously emits blaze around him, that he also gives his followers rewards in form of edibles, and how compared to other immortal lords of this world, Lord of Ashes is less interested in this world, thus being less active and doesn't interfere in it as much. Shen realizes that all of this sounds like some kind of a cartoon story as he picks up another book to learn more about this Lord of Ashes. He learns about this Lord's many titles and realizes that sometime in the past, when everything in his life was going bad, he tried doing some kind of a ritual for fun but in hopes his life would go back on the track. And this ritual involved him putting many papers on all sides of the table and on these papers he'd have to write titles found in the ritual book, then write his name on one of them as well, read the words that make the spell happen and spin the table. But after doing all of that and waiting for midnight to pass, 
as the book instructed, nothing happened and the ritual never came into fruition. So now Shen wonders if the ritual had anything to do with his recent transmigration to this new world. He thinks it won't be too long before people realize he's lying to them about being this Lord of Ashes, but also realizes that after the second summon, his flame ability has improved as well, but it still can't do any harm to anything and can only be used as an illusion. And he gets mad thinking that even after unlocking this flame ability, and even coming to this new world, he's still a pathetic loser since all he can do with this flame is bluff people how it's real, but actually it's not. He then looks at the mask that the high priest gave him the last time, and as he inspects it closer, thinks how it doesn't feel any different from any other ordinary mask. But now he decides to try something different with it that he read in the book and throws the mask in the shadow where it actually gets merged with shadows as he gets a new idea now. He finds a mirror to look at himself because what he learned from that book a couple of moments ago is that if the mask merges with the shadow, he would be able to change his personal appearance as well. As he focuses up, Shadow starts surrounding him and boom, his face actually changes and after realizing he can change his face, he tries changing his clothes and the rest of the body and manages to do that as well, but to what he changed into, I think it's better not to have the ability but to change into these kinds of things. What the heck is this bros? Shen starts crying tears of joy, thinking his life is finally worth living. He then starts hearing summoning words again, but realizes that this time they are different as he wonders if the different summoning chants can be used to summon the same lord in this world. Now we see Byron actually saying these summoning words and he has two companions behind him. He takes out his sword and continues the chant and then says how he's been waiting for this moment for many years and how this night tonight is special because it happens rarely and in this night if he uses ancient witch's spell he can summon one of many lords and after summoning this lord if he offers the right tribute to it this lord will help him by giving him any knowledge that he asks for, but how sometimes this knowledge can bring happiness, but it can also bring sorrow and despair other times. Byron thinks about how he'll receive capital punishment for this, but he doesn't care if he actually manages to revive his daughter. Then suddenly ashes start emitting all around him and as he gets mesmerized by this, he sees some letters in front of him and letters are spelling out a sentence that says, can you comprehend why have I manifested like this? Byron thinks how what he has heard from legends and tales, this lord has always manifested as a white fog, but nobody ever knew or understood why. As we see Shen hidden in this white fog, thinking how he took appearance of this last customer, and as he sees Byron in front of him, realizes that Byron must have been the one that summoned him as well. We see the girl that was standing behind Byron and she gets absolutely amazed after looking at Shen and then faints as we see her point of view and see that she saw a huge lurking shadow behind the fog. Byron then yells saying he thinks he knows the answer to the question why did this lord manifest as the letters and answers saying that what they lowly humans see of this lord is nothing more than a projection of their own minds as the letters form a new sentence saying exactly so. Byron then gets relaxed because he's got the answer right and then starts praising this lord telling him that he has brought this lord a worthy sacrifice and asks from this lord to revive his deceased daughter. As Byron lifts his hands up to offer this sacrifice, a giant lizard-like monster appears as Shen gets scared a bit thinking this monster is hideous. Shen then thinks so even though Byron seemed really friendly when he met him for the first time in the coffee shop, it would be for the best for Shen to keep on the act of him being this lord until the summon is over. So he responds saying that he accepts the offering of this weak mortal and as he says it, 
fires emerge from his body and drag the giant lizard monster towards him, but in the form of an egg, which is really convenient, Shen thinks, since he doesn't need to carry the huge body of this lizard monster himself. Now this leaves Byron in complete shock, because he thinks that this lord's power is unimaginable, since he consumed this giant lizard monster in a matter of seconds, and with such ease, as if the monster was nothing more than a supper for this lord. Byron then yells, asking this lord to help him revive his deceased daughter, and Shen thinks to himself that he can see that Byron cares much for his daughter, but how unfortunately Shen can't revive her because he doesn't possess the abilities to do so, and this leaves him a little bit disappointed and sad. Now Shen remembers what he learned from the book he read recently, that there are eight immortal lords in this world and that they are the lords of light, beauty, blade, soul, cup, cast, awakening and winter. Cup is referred to as the lord of ashes because it symbolizes fertility and feast, appetite and lust. And this is why the lord of ashes offers edibles, his own food as rewards to his followers. The white fog belongs to the lord of awakening and it symbolizes analytical thinking, knowledge and it discourages ignorance. His rewards are hidden knowledge given to his followers, which were also mentioned a little bit earlier, the knowledge that can cause his followers to feel extreme happiness or extreme sorrow and sadness. Now Shen realizes that Byron sees him as this Lord of Awakening and thus Shen figures out that he needs to give him some knowledge, but he's still thinking about what kind of knowledge could he give him. Shen then remembers how according to that book, the knowledge that Lord of Awakening gives to his followers is oftentimes not understood because human brains are limited. So Shen figures out he could give him some knowledge from some books of his original world because Byron couldn't have possibly ever learned this before since it doesn't exist in their world. Now if Shen isn't Mr. Lin's descendant bros with these methods that he uses to help people, I don't know who could be. Now while Shen is thinking all of this, we see Byron patiently waiting and a little bit concerned because he's thinking that maybe his offering wasn't good enough and that's why Lord of Awakening is not responding, but then suddenly Byron gets surprised as letters in front of him form a sentence saying, to fulfill the aspirations which keep thy restless, what's abstruse becomes thine inheritance, higher profound taboo knowledge. Now we see Shen, as he is reciting these words, only he's not reciting these words but some kid's poem from his world about some fish and the life of this random fish. Okay bros, after doing a little bit of digging, this is not actually a kid's poem, but some ancient Chinese stories about carefree life of some creatures. I'm sorry for getting it wrong, I just want to leave this information out there. Now, as Shen continues reciting this song, we see Byron getting consumed by this knowledge as he continues reading the sentences and we get to learn that this knowledge he is receiving is taboo knowledge in this world because it's not actually knowledge that allows you to resurrect a dead person back to life, but actually information that would allow the person that learns it to achieve immortality of his soul. And Byron realizes that if this information was made public, it would completely change the world they live in. Suddenly, the sentences stop, stopping Byron's vision of immortality with them, as we see Shen with a satisfying smile on his face thinking how he did a good job just now, as his body is slowly vanishing because the summoning is ending soon. Byron is thinking how the knowledge he just gained is definitely the one that causes sorrow and sadness, because he has a huge burden to bear now for bringing it into this world. By the way bros, I just wanna say thank you to the authors of this manhua for making the protagonist and Byron look identical in these chapters, because why the hell not, let's confuse our readers as much as possible. <laughs> now Byron also thinks how maybe the Lord of Awakening gave him this knowledge 
knowledge because he realized Byron could comprehend it and probably spread it around the world. Now we go back to Shen's room as he gets teleported back, thinking how he managed to look like a real Lord of Awakening this time. He looks at the time and remembers how before he was summoned it was 11.30 pm and the book he read about Lord of Awakening said that he usually answers the summons made at the 23rd hour of the day and he also realizes how he's been summoned twice now as two different lords, Lord of Ashes and Lord of Awakening and wonders if there will be more summons in the future. He writes down details of this last summon in his diary, writing the name of the person that summoned him and the reason why he summoned Shen. Shen also looks at the photo he took while being summoned, thinking how it's useless for him now and how he risked a lot by taking this photo because if the camera flash went off it would have definitely looked suspicious. He then remembers that the last time he was summoned he gained new powers and wanted to see if he got some new powers now as he lifts his hands up and yells just to get disappointed because he didn't unlock any new powers this time. He also looks at the mask and the egg he received from Byron, thinking how now he has two different gifts from these followers. He places the egg in the box, thinking how it would probably be useful to him sometimes later in his life on this world when he learns more about the egg. Now after he falls asleep, we can see the box flipping over and the egg falls out of it, getting covered in flames as the giant lizard monster appears again next to Shen while he's still sound asleep. The monster gets scared as it looks at Shen because this monster realizes that it is looking at Lord of Ashes. And as Shen snores loudly, this monster starts shaking in fear, so much so that it runs out of the room and escapes from this place. And after it exits the coffee shop, it starts shining and shrinking and it finally turns into a cute little cat as it walks down the road. Now we get introduced to a new character whose name is George and we learn that he's one of seven Nolan's grade A investigators and a grade A investigator is a person who can single-handedly deal with the situation of disaster grade. He's so skillful and powerful that other people in the anti-magic bureau almost worship him. Then we see George breaking the fourth wall and telling the writer of this comic to stop with the introduction and I immediately like this character because he gives off Deadpool vibes so far. He's standing in front of the coffee shop where Shen is working, thinking how he got reports of suspicious activities happening here, about a small girl holding some magical cup for a prolonged period of time, but from what he can tell so far, the person working here is just a regular nobody kid who's just trying to make a living by selling coffee. However, George needs to investigate this place in person to confirm this info. He thinks how the confidentiality of this case is top secret and finds it a bit strange because they've gotten the reports that an evil lord has descended into Nolan. By the way, Nolan is the name of the city or the world where they live in. He checks the photo of the suspicious girl and thinks how it's a shame that this photo isn't of a higher quality and after seeing the cakes Aina possesses, I have to say, George, my man, I agree with you. He enters the coffee shop and orders one latte and inspects Shen, but realizes that there's nothing really special going on with this individual, so he figures that there's probably nothing worth investigating in this shop. As Shen is bringing him coffee, George asks Shen if he noticed any strange occurrences recently and Shen gets scared, thinking that if he isn't careful with this guy, he might find out Shen's truth as Shen answers that besides the bad weather and because of it there is a lack of customers, nothing strange is happening. Bros, people mistake him for someone that he's not. He's selling coffee to his customers, the rain is constantly falling outside, this has to be Mr. Lin in another universe. George compliments the coffee, saying it tastes quite well, as Shen thanks him but raises his guard, because even though this guy seems like a normal man, he's still intimidating for some reason. We see Shen shaking as he thinks that maybe after he acquires new powers, he doesn't get them immediately after being summoned, but after some time passes. He tries casting this spell, but with no success, 
but thinks how he can definitely feel it inside of him and how he's able to manipulate the matter of which his body is made and he becomes gas. He also realizes that he can manipulate this gas form and after 10 seconds unwillingly he goes back to normal thinking that even though 10 seconds is not long this ability is still better than the flame ability he has. Suddenly George charges back in surprising Shen as Shen asks him why did he suddenly return as he thinks that if George would have entered just a couple of seconds earlier he would realize Shen's secret. George thinks how he could feel traces of an aura of a powerful lord just a couple of moments ago and how the power he felt was utterly terrifying as he looks at Shen and sees a fiery aura bursting from around him. Now this scares George as well as he thinks how the traces of this powerful aura are like a fish bait for him and just pull him towards it. As Shen asks him if he came back for another coffee and George answers yes. Shen goes to make the coffee but he actually goes back into his room thinking that George has figured out his secret and gets scared because he also starts thinking about what kind of legal punishment he would receive. Now we go back to George who's trying to understand why Shen just released this powerful aura that called him back to the shop and George doesn't understand what Shen's ultimate goal might be. He spots Shen's smartphone and picks it up to snoop around it a bit and finds endless pictures of cute cats, which leaves him a bit surprised. But among the endless cat pictures, he spots a picture of the room Shen was summoned in last night and sees a magical summoning circle in the corner of the picture. George doesn't understand why Shen decided to give him this information but thinks so he'll definitely need to investigate it further. Now we can see Shen return with the ingredients for the coffee but after coming back to the front of the coffee shop he realizes that George is gone thinking why did he leave in such a hurry. Now we go to the dungeon where Shen was summoned the last time which photo of George saw on Shen's phone and George is actually entering it already. After inspecting it for a bit, he can feel the heavy leftover of an aura of an immortal lord. As he lifts his head up, he can see some creature lurking in the shadows and as this monster charges at him, we learn that this is the lizard boy thing that Shen got as a gift after his last summon. George jumps up in the air and swiftly dodges the monster's attack and as he's falling through the air, he summons his blade number 3 and we see a small dagger appear in his hands as he thinks how even though this is not his most powerful weapon, it should suffice with dealing with this monster. He suddenly disappears and this confuses the monster but we can see he left his knife behind after disappearing and the knife is falling down on the monster while George appears underneath it. He comments in a cool manner that the monster should watch its head as the knife falls straight onto the head instantly piercing it. George resummons the knife in his hand as we see the cut it made in the head of this monster which leaves this monster scared as it runs away. Man poor lizard boy he was just chilling in his lair and this dude attacked him for no reason. Pfft not cool bros. Now on the very next page George comments how running away is pointless because as long as this kind of monster exists in this world it will need to be killed. Bros, why is my lizard boy not getting any love? This makes me sad. George then throws his blade and while it's flying through the air, it just disappears, trying to reappear behind lizard boy to kill him, but George misses. He says the summoning words again, extract and utilize, throws the blade again and misses, and he does it a couple more times, but always misses, thinking this monster is hard to catch and kill, and you go lizard boy, fight for your life. Now George comments how he's used two fingers, two toes and half of his face to do these knife attacks and I guess he sacrificed those to cast this knife spell but it's still not well explained so don't take my word for it. Anyway, George realizes how his power level is not strong enough right now to finish off Lizard Boy and thinks how a sorcerer would do a better job probably and then remembers Brian who is a sorcerer as well. George also realizes that the chaos seed used to summon Lizard Boy 
is related to Lord of Ashes, but judging from the aura he just felt in this dungeon a moment ago, Lord of Awakening has been summoned here. He calls back to his headquarters, letting them know that the risk rating of the man working in the coffee shop should be set to untouchable and how after returning, George will write a detailed report about him. Two months pass and we see a small fire flying through the rain and entering Shen's coffee shop, as we get to learn that he can now use his fires to spy on people by sending the flames flying around like a scout, which allows him to listen and see people in the radius of 300 meters. Then suddenly he lifts his fist up and slams it onto the table, but before hitting the table, his fist turns to gas or better yet mist, and he's practicing this instant mystization, as he calls it, to turn parts of his body in mist in an instant, basically. He also comments how he can only turn his right arm into mist and can't change the size while in the mist form. Now we see him summon fire in one and mist in the other hand, thinking how he unlocked two completely different types of abilities, as he decides to rest and call it off for today's training. As he's laying in his bed, he thinks about how business has been so bad recently, and if not for George's recent visits, there would be close to no customers in his shop. He also thinks how George always listens to him very carefully when Shen tells him stories of his own world. He then thinks how it's a good thing to have powerful friends like George, because if this world figures out that Shen is faking to be these immortal lords, they would come chasing him down, but his powerful friends would probably be able to protect him. He falls asleep thinking how he'll definitely need their help later, as he suddenly finds himself in a dream and realizes that he is dreaming and bros, I'm telling you this is Mr. Lin in another universe and I love it so far. Anyways. After waking up in this dream, he thinks that he might be in the realm of the Lord of Ashes because everything around him is made of ashes. He sees Aina in the distance and thinks how since this is all just his dream, he can use this situation to play with Aina a little bit as he starts touching her face and other things that we didn't get to see bros. Suddenly, as the lights start surrounding the area, he figures out that the dream is probably ending soon and thinks how he's only dreamt of this place once in the last two months that he is in this world and wonders what's the reason for dreaming about it now. He touches Aina's head one more time before waking up, telling her that they'll meet again in the future. Now we go back to Aina's home as she wakes up thinking how before going to sleep she used the spell to contact the Lord of Ashes in her dreams and the spell actually worked. She feels heat coming from her back and as she turns around to see why, she can see a huge glowing mark on her back placed by Lord of Ashes. Now we go back to Shen who is thinking how he has met Aina three times so far and even though all three were in direct contacts, every time he has seen her, it's been an odd encounter as we see a mystery figure outside of the coffee shop on the rain preparing to enter the coffee shop. Shen thinks how he's lucky Aina and her cult don't actually know more about him and where he lives because they would see through his lies and we see the door of the coffee shop open as Shen tries to greet his new customer but as he sees it's actually Aina, he gets scared and shocked thinking how he can't change his shape now because his mask of transformation is in the other room right now. He turns his back to Aina, asking for her order, as she starts thinking about what drink to order, Shen continues thinking how she will figure it all out soon and he'll be in real trouble, but he wonders how did they learn where he lives, thinking that maybe they can use spells and crystal balls to find out things like these, so Shen thinks how he needs to figure out what to tell her quickly to keep this facade of him being an actual Lord of Ashes running. He then tells her that she's finally arrived, thinking how she has seen him in this form twice before, so she probably must feel shocked right now to see her lord standing in front of her. For those of you who don't know bros, she didn't actually see him in his real form, but what she saw was the form of Lord of Ashes, 
but Shen doesn't know this. And this comment he just made leaves Aina confused because she never saw this man in her life before. He then continues speaking, saying that he never expected her to come all the way here and asks her what's the reason she came, as she responds in the most naive way, saying how there's no special reason for her being here. Now Shen thinks how it doesn't feel as if she's here for malicious reasons and figures it must be because he already saved her life twice. He comments how she should tell him what coffee she likes so he can prepare it for her, but Aina responds how she doesn't understand what he means by coffee. Shen thinks that maybe she's too young and that's why she doesn't understand what coffee is, so he decides to make her vanilla latte because its flavor is fine for young people to drink as well, Shen thinks. Now we see Aina being confused and trying to figure out what's going on because this man she just saw for the first time ever is acting like he knows her very well and Shen thinks the reason for her current confusion is the shock she's in right now because because she just met face to face with her lord. Oh yes, give me those sweet sweet misunderstandings. As Aina is waiting for her coffee, she thinks how she can definitely feel the aura of Lord of Ashes here, but she still can't figure out who the hell is this guy. After serving her coffee, Shen comments how she must be really confused because she doesn't understand why he would be here, but Aina is left even more confused now as she says that she doesn't know him but she could sense Lord of Ashes aura around him. Now this makes Shen happy because this means she didn't see through his lies of being a fake Lord of Ashes but he also realizes that he probably has the aura of this Lord of Ashes around his body and if Aina could feel Feel it, other people could do, so this could lead to Shen's downfall, he thinks, because he doesn't know how to suppress the aura. Shen figures out that he can't act both like Lord of Ashes and a coffee shop worker at the same time, so he figures out that since Aina still didn't realize what's going on here, he could act like he's the messenger of Lord of Ashes, and while he's thinking about all these master plans, we can see Aina just casually enjoying her coffee without realizing anything. Shen gives her a towel, telling her to wipe herself off because she's soaking wet, and as he's going back to counter, he comments how Lord of Ashes watches all, and at that moment another person enters the coffee shop, this time the person being George, who's covered in blood from his last battle with Lizard Boy, and this leaves Shen surprised, thinking how could he walk around like that. But all of a sudden, Shen gets petrified, thinking how Aina's still here and he can never let them meet because they would figure it all out together somehow. He asks George to have a seat in the other part of the coffee shop and this surprises George who's thinking how Shen knew that he would come, so that's why he prepared a separate area for them to talk so other people can spy them and George admires Shen thinking that he should have never expected less from him to begin with. After going in the separate area, George starts speaking, explaining how Shen probably already knows that George is a high rank investigator working for the Anti-Magic Bureau and how their duty is to maintain and guard the human civilization of Biland from magic. And Biland is the name of this world. I guess. Shen gets relieved, thinking that it's a good thing that George didn't notice Aina as George asks Shen for a favor. Shen says that he'll get him a cup of coffee first and they can talk details later. And this leaves George confused because he doesn't understand why he needs to drink coffee, but he thanks Shen. Now as Shen leaves the room, he thinks how he can't have both Aina and George in the coffee shop at the same time and how he needs to send one away somehow, so he gets close to Aina, asking her if her arrival here has anything to do with her cult and she gets a warm sensation on her back because her insignia left by Lord of Ashes has just activated. Aina comments how her cult is going through a difficult time now because of the battle with the Tranquil Tongue and how she needs to contact Lord of Ashes again to ask for his help. Shen comments how she just needs to have faith in Lord of Ashes and that he's going to solve it then. 
as he gets all preachy now, saying that having firm belief and strong faith in her Lord should give her the confidence and strength to battle any darkness, and this yet again leaves Aina confused because she doesn't understand what Shen means, but it definitely sounds scary to her. Shen continues preaching, saying that Lord of Ashes is observing Aina closely, and bros, I would too, I mean, because she is his devout follower, nothing else, you know? You know? Shen also tells her how there is no place for her here right now, and this surprises her because she didn't expect to hear this. Now, after Aina left, Shen goes back to George in peace, saying they can talk now, and George says he needs help with finding someone as he takes out the picture out of his coat, explaining that this person probably belongs to a dangerous cult and is a big threat to be land, and George comments how Anti-Magic Bureau wants to exterminate this person and this cult as soon as possible. As he hands the picture to Shen, Shen gets completely surprised because he realizes that this is Aina in the picture. Now as he's looking at the picture, he's thinking that he can't betray Aina now as he tells George that he will help him and if he ever meets this girl, he'll report it to George right away. Now this leaves George surprised a bit because he thinks the photo is so blurry that there's no way to tell if it's a boy or a girl on it, but Shen figured it out immediately. So George thinks he really is a special person as he thanks Shen and asks how could he ever repay him, to which Shen replies by saying, let's just say you owe me one for now. George thinks how it would be better to give Shen some relic than to owe him a favor, because you never know what could a mysterious person like this ask you for a favor. And as he's leaving the coffee shop, he tells Shen that he'll bring him a gratitude gift in the future, and they say their goodbyes as George leaves. Shen feels a bit uncomfortable right now, because he got caught up in the middle of these important events in B-Land. Now we transition to a new person, a new old person, a girl named Yana, and this is the girl that was behind Byron when he was summoning Lord of Awakening, aka Shen for the first time. Byron asks her why she called him as she asks if it's okay for her to get a bit more money now, saying how she has 8 siblings and needs to take care of all of them, so in a very very shy way she asks Byron for a raise. Byron, a bit disappointed by this, decides to give her a raise because even after that draining ritual they did, she is still working hard and this makes Yana very happy. Now Byron thinks how only weak people care for material wealth and he remembers Shen as well, thinking he is one of those weak people too. Now a little bit of time passes and Byron tries to summon the Lord of Awakening again and pierces his hand with a ritual dagger, uttering the summoning incantation, saying he feels big sadness and despair and this is why he is summoning this Lord. We see him standing on the summoning circle and doing the ritual, while Yana behind him closed her eyes and ears, thinking how she can't watch this. Then in the shadows we see a figure appear, as Shen came to Byron again, and again in his form because let's confuse our readers, right? Now as he thinks that no matter how many times Byron summons him, he can't help him with the revival of his deceased daughter. Now Byron starts praising Lord of Awakening, and after praising him, says that his understanding is limited and he couldn't unravel all the secrets of the knowledge that Lord of Awakening passed on to him the last time. Shen picks up an act of the Lord of Awakening once again as he asks Byron in a poetic manner if he wishes to gain more knowledge as Byron gets excited and tells Shen that indeed he feels the need to increase his knowledge further. Shen then walks towards Yana as he tells Byron that he will fulfill his wish for knowledge if Byron offers him a worthy sacrifice. As Byron agrees, saying he'll offer anything, we see Shen taking pictures like a true creature. Byron offers Shen a magical ring, which brings good luck to its wearer during the day, but bad luck during the night, but of course Shen doesn't know this, and thinks how if he starts running low on money, he can sell this silver ring. We see a lady approaching the summoning room, as Shen is trying to figure out what song to recite to Byron now to give him the knowledge, and as Byron is waiting to receive the new taboo knowledge, he hears a voice that yells, Father! 
he turns around and sees his daughter Eve and as Yana peeks to see what's going on, she sees a huge monster lurking in the shadows causing her to faint immediately. Eve now explains to her father that she feels as if she has been trapped in a long long dream and just heard a voice that told her to wake up and she is here now. Now this leaves Shen completely surprised as he thought that he doesn't possess the ability to resurrect and yes bros I thought this is Byron 2 first but it's actually Shen who thinks this I had to go back a couple of times to figure it out. Now Shen figures out how even though he has no idea how his daughter was revived at least now Byron will fully believe Shen is a real lord and not a sussy imposter. He then tells Byron how next time he should offer a more valuable sacrifice and Byron realizes that he wasn't given any new forbidden knowledge because his sacrifice was lacking this time as Eve comments how she feels that somebody is watching her but she finds feels happy being near her father. As Byron turns and we can see his face visibly angry because he realizes that Lord of Awakening is eyeing her out as a potential sacrifice as he gets a morbid idea to actually offer his daughter as a sacrifice so then he might receive new taboo knowledge. Bros, this guy got consumed and addicted to this knowledge thing so much so he's ready to sacrifice his daughter? What? Now Eve reaches for her father and asks him what's going on. He breaks down and starts crying now, hugging her and saying that he'll never let anything harm her again and will always keep her by his side and protect her, as she responds that she is happy to hear that. Byron then begs Lord of Awakening to forgive him for a lousy sacrifice this time and promises he'll bring a better sacrifice next time, but asks Lord of Awakening to not eye his daughter anymore if possible. Shen thinks how he just looked her in the eyes and how that's not a big deal as he thinks how Byron belongs to the Tranquil Tongue cult which is the enemy cult of Anus cult and how Shen didn't want to get involved with more cults <laughs> but since he received this disaster level relic ring as a gift from them now he doesn't have a choice. Now we see Shen practicing his mystization form and thinking how this power has grown stronger but there are still some things about this world that he doesn't understand completely like how to use the ring he received as a tribute from Byron and he knows that his knowledge of the magical realms of this world is also quite limited. He thinks that he should definitely get some books to learn more about it and as for the ring, maybe he can somehow indirectly use Byron to explain the functions of the ring. He dresses up and goes out to try to find the place where Byron was summoning him and he gets on a bus and if this was Mr. Lin's universe, this bus wouldn't be called a bus but like a human refrigerator transportation unit I guess. Because you can't have both magic and technology in the same world I guess. <laughs> As he's traveling in the bus, he looks at the photos he took on his phone, I mean on his communication device and after looking at a photo, he sees a high wall in the distance thinking if he finds this wall, he can find the building by looking down from top of the wall. He also explains how this city's name is Beeland and how there are four districts in Beeland, each one separated by a high wall like this one. Four parts are the financial capital and trade center of Beeland, second is government district where the prime minister lives and the last two are the workers residential area and the mixed industrial, commercial and residential area. As he climbs on the city walls, he spots another person standing on it as well while he thinks that he never would have expected someone else to come here in such an awful weather. After looking at this girl, Shen thinks that she's probably around 17 or 18 years old and since she has completely black hair, she maybe belongs to Shang Tsuan people of this world he thinks. But he doesn't have more time to think about her now because he needs to inspect the area below him and while looking through his binoculars he actually spots Byron's mansion and figures out that Byron maybe has many different identities besides being a sorcerer. 
Shen also figures out how he will need to learn more about Byron and other people that try to summon him so he can manipulate them more easily when they summon him, so that they don't realize he's not a real lord but a fake one. He also figures out that if Byron was to catch him right now, Shen can probably report him to George since the summoning ritual that Byron has conducted twice now is illegal in this world. He then spots Yana, remembering her as the girl who lost her consciousness after seeing him get summoned, and he figures out she's getting on a bus to go to college. And if she's Byron's disciple, he probably has some connections to this college she's studying in as well. Now he wonders about the black haired girl again, thinking that she might have some secrets as well, but he figures out his paranoia is getting out of hand and he decides to leave because she might as well just be a normal girl he accidentally just met. Now after Shen leaves, we see this girl as she thinks about him now, not understanding who is he and why does he have such a heavy aura of Lord of Ashes around him. She exhales, thinking how if he stood there a moment longer, she would have probably attacked him, as another individual approaches her, saying that he is her new partner and we get to learn that this is George. He asks if she's not too young to be an investigator and she tells him that her name is Su Ling and how she's a first year college student now at the Imperial College, same college where Yana, Byron's disciple, goes to as well. George now comments how there's no hopes for this world if the Anti-Magic Bureau is hiring high school students to work as investigators and thinks how early retirement sounds like a good option right now as Su Ling gets angry and yells that she's not a high school but a college student and that even though she's young she passed all the requirements to get this job however George is not impressed she also says that her investigator rank is B level and that she already has 10 years of work experience in this field even though she just recently started working for the anti-magic bureau George laughs saying how it doesn't matter anyway because right now they have more urgent matters to discuss as he comments how this city is in big danger. He explains how there is this one cult that will try to summon one of the lords of the outer world and how the sacrifice they want to offer to this lord is the entire city itself. Su Ling starts walking away as she asks for more details and George asks her why is she leaving and she said that they're going to get some dinner that George is going to pay for as she gets all presentational stating several reasons why he should do so. Reason number one she says you are the senior so it should be your treat. Reason number two because you are the senior you have more money and now George interrupts her face bombing himself and saying that he will take her out to his favorite coffee shop and how he'll introduce her to someone there. She comments that they can go to this coffee shop if she can get food there. Now we see Shen taking a bath thinking how after finding Byron's mansion he should go to the library next to find some books to learn more about supernatural things of this world. He also figures out how he doesn't have money to borrow books but he can use the mask of transformation to change his appearance and go in as a new person and borrow a book as a new person. My boy really is down bad bros. He then hears George's voice coming from the coffee shop as he runs out of the bathroom to serve his customers. Now we see George and Su Lin waiting in the coffee shop as she is getting impatient. She hears Shen's voice who comments how even when the weather is this bad, George came back so he probably enjoys Shen's coffee a lot. As Su Lin turns her head around and sees Shen with the immense aura of Lord of Ashes glowing around him. She gets surprised and angry as she starts remembering a man in a burning house and a sword burning inside of it as well, as she comments how she needs to calm down now and not have these thoughts. Shen then comments, saying how he thought that in order to work in the anti-magic bureau, you needed to be an adult. 
and not a high schooler, <laughs> and Su Ling remains silent here, remembering that George told her that their original goal with this individual is to observe him to learn more about him. But even though she tries hard to stay silent, she utters how she's not a high schooler, but a college student, as George gets embarrassed by this, saying how she's still just first year of college, so basically there is no difference, leaving Su Ling more mad. George then asks Shen if he found anything about the person from the photo, and Shen comments how they can talk more after they order coffee, and we see Su Lin being so angry she's actually cute while she's looking at the menu and orders so much sweet food it would cause type 3 diabetes just from smelling this food. And Shen asks her what coffee would she like, as she says she doesn't care and that he can decide. Shen says he'll be right back after preparing this food, as he thinks how he's gonna make so much money now off of this girl. George says how there's no way she'll be able to eat all of this food, as she responds that she can pack it up and eat it later, and he tells her that food in coffee shops is expensive, and you don't usually come here to eat to get well fed, as she says that price is not a problem for her, right now since it's George's street. My boy George is getting out played dirty. Now she starts explaining some legal stuff to him, saying how he's also a rank A investigator, which means that he earns more than 99% people in this city, and also saying that all the money they spend here should be compensated buy their company back because they are here on a mission to learn more about this man and this is all just part of a mission. George visibly defeated says that she is right, he does make a lot of money as rank A investigator, but comments how rank B investigators, like herself, also make a nice amount of money and asks her why is she acting like a beggar then. She says that she's still young and needs to save money and then starts gobbling up the food she ordered as if there is no tomorrow. Now George brings up the favor he asked of Shen one more time, saying that there's something else Shen needs to know as he explains that a big danger awaits this city because there's a cult that's trying to sacrifice all of the people in this city to summon one of the exterior lords and how even if this lord is not evil, people would still lose their lives and as he continues speaking on, Shen thinks how they are actually summoning him. So how can they sacrifice the entire city then, because that means they would sacrifice him too. But also, if they are using everyone as a sacrifice, he would be someone in front of all of these people, so someone would probably figure out that he is faking. Now Shen remembers how Aina said that her cult, Chaos Ashes Order, is currently in a bad state because of their opposing cult, the Tranquil Tongue, so Shen thinks that maybe they are the ones wanting to do this huge sacrificial summoning. He asks George if maybe he's talking about the Tranquil Tongue, and this surprises George, who thinks how Shen really does have the knowledge about everything. George explains how they attacked the Anti-Magic Bureau once before and caused a lot of casualties, but how Anti-Magic Bureau still doesn't know the motive behind their actions. He then offers some kind of a package to Shen, saying that instead of owing him a favor, he'd rather repay his debt with this. Now Shen thinks that if he accepts this gift, he will really need to help George find Aina, so he tells George that he should keep this gift for now, and George comments asking if this means Shen won't help him find this person, and Shen responds by explaining that this girl is not a bad person for sure, as we see Su Ling still gobbling up all the food in the back. Shen tells George how there's currently a war between Chaos Ashes Order and the Tranquil Tongue, and George thanks him for this information, as he tells Su Ling it's time for them to go, but she still isn't finished eating all the food she ordered, telling Shen to pack it up for her to carry, as he responds that they don't really have food to go in this coffee shop, and as Su Ling is looking at the remaining food, thinking what to do with it, she starts eating it quickly so she doesn't waste any of it. Some time passes now and we see Shen going to the library, thinking that there's almost a million different books in it, and also thinking how he can't enter it since he's not a student, 
but he can turn to mist and then enter it easily and manifest himself in the bathroom by coming in through the bathroom window. He then enters the bathroom with someone else's face as well, thinking how these abilities he learned definitely are useful. He goes to the library and finds a book about the Chaos Ashes Order and decides to learn about them first. He reads how once in the past, after the Chaos Ashes Order has summoned the Lord of Ashes, after being summoned, he boiled the sea, made the clouds catch on fire and burnt the whole earth, as he figures out that there is no way he is this powerful and thinks how he'll never be able to do something like this. After summoning the Lord of Ashes and receiving his blessing, Chaos Ashes Order became so powerful that they overthrew the king, killed everyone in the king's army and took control of all the women and treasures of this city. But their reign didn't last for long and they were defeated by the Korna Order and today Chaos Ashes Order is almost irrelevant. After finishing this book, he finds a new one to read, this time the book's title is Language of Silence, written by Yer Villard 100 years ago, so Shen figures out this guy is probably dead by now. He figures out these cults can summon lords by offering them human sacrifice, and the greater the sacrifice is, the greater the blessing they receive is. But the sacrifice is also limited because there is a limited number of people living in this world. He thinks how if they could somehow tap into life after death, they could increase their followers and sacrifices vastly. He reads that many people thought that this language of silence is fearful and how the cult who uses this language worships the Lord of Winter and the silence symbolizes the snow that covers everything but this doesn't always have to mean that this is the death of everything. Now he reads about the tranquil tongue and learns that they offer their souls as sacrifices to the lord that they try to summon and Shen figures out that this could definitely be a huge problem if they are trying to sacrifice this entire city. He then gets interrupted by a man who calls him Arthur asking why is he here and not on a sick leave. However, Shen still doesn't realize who this man is, thinking that this is some friend of Arthur, who's a student whose body shape Shen has taken right now, as he turns around and sees Byron, thinking it really is an old friend, but not Arthur's, but Shen's. We see Shen get a bit flustered and tries to make excuses, why is he in the school currently, not he as Shen, but he as Arthur, the student who was supposed to be sick right now. He even starts acting up sick in front of Byron and Byron actually believes him, saying that he should take more care of himself, especially in a bad weather like today. Byron then sees that Shen is reading a book about cults and their histories and Shen responds saying that he doesn't believe this to be true, but it's a fun read and of course he's lying, just trying to cover up for himself. Byron comments how Shen seems more interested in these so-called fake cults than actual classes that Byron teaches. And by the way bros, to make things a little less confusing, I'll call Shen by his real name, even though Byron currently sees him as Arthur due to the shapeshift Shen has done. But if Byron ever realizes it is Shen, I will point it out. Now, Shen puts the book back and tries to literally run away, but Byron tells him that they should walk and talk together. After walking for a bit, Byron tells Shen to wait a moment until he gets something done in the activity room, and after he leaves, Shen thinks how Byron is probably a math teacher at this school, and the girl that was with him during the summoning is probably his student. He also figures out how this college, which name is Burden Imperial College, is of world class and how Byron has a completely different personality while here, meaning that this college is probably not aware of his other sorcerer-like lifestyle, where he's summoning exterior lords of this world. Byron returns carrying an umbrella, saying they can leave now, and as they are walking out in this rain, 
Shen wonders why is Byron dressed so heavily since it's not that cold outside right now and thinks how superhumans of this world, like Byron, usually focus a lot of their life on studying magical arts and relics which usually has other effects on their bodies too. And Shen thinks that maybe Byron fears even the slightest cold because of some price he needed to pay in some ritual he's done before. Shen decides to test this theory and tells Byron how recently he's been studying a lot about language of silence, which is a method one of the most influential cults has used. And Shen comments how these cult stories are rather interesting, but they are not true after all, and Byron just murmurs saying, mm-hmm, not falling into Shen's trap. As they continue walking, now Byron starts speaking and he tells Shen that after he went to the activity room, his goal was to actually check where Arthur is and how he found out that Arthur is actually still at home, sick. Byron then takes out a paper out of his pocket and says that this is a special spell but doesn't immediately explain what it is. First he says that they are alone here and won't be bothered by other people. So this fake Arthur, who is actually Shen, should tell Byron who is he actually and what is his goal and if he doesn't decide to cooperate, Byron threatens to kill him as he snaps his fingers and casts this spell and we see raindrops literally stop in mid-air and start falling upwards if they're going upwards, they're not falling but climbing. Mm? So raindrops start climbing upwards bros and this leaves Shen shocked as he sees a huge magic circle appear above him and while he's trying to figure out what to do now, Byron's seal lights up and now he gets both scared and shocked realizing that the aura that's emitting out of Shen right now is the aura of Lord of Awakening, the last lord that Byron summoned. After realizing this, Byron calls back his magic circle that he wanted to use to attack Shen as he states that he belongs to the Tranquil Tongue cult and he thought Shen belongs to the Anti-Magic Bureau and that Shen was hunting him down. But now, after realizing he is somehow connected to the Lord of Awakening, Byron states that he has no intention to hurt him now. Now Shen realizes that Byron sends the aura of Lord of Awakening after Shen used mystization, meaning that the ability he uses corresponds with the Lord that the ability belongs to, creating an aura of that Lord around Shen. He then presents himself as a messenger of Lord of Awakening and asks Byron why he allied with the Tranquil Tongue, to which Byron responds that he can obtain a powerful A-grade relic from this cult, which he was planning to offer as a tribute to Lord of Awakening. He then says how even if he doesn't get more knowledge from this lord, he will still offer the tribute just to ask this lord to stop watching over his daughter. Shen now tells Byron how he will transfer the message to Lord of Ashes and says that Lord of Ashes commands Byron to betray the Tranquil Tongue and give him their information. Byron questions this for a bit, thinking what would a powerful lord do with such information. But Shen looks at Byron with glowing eyes and Byron senses the aura again, making him agree to this request. As they part ways, we see Byron thinking to himself how it's going to hurt him to betray his old friend who's also a part of the Tranquil Tongue cult and he thinks how he would never do something like that even for an exterior lord, but how now he has to protect his daughter with all of his powers, so he needs to obey this lord now. Bros, poor Byron, I feel sad for him for having to betray his old friend just so Shen could save the big oppie girl so he can enjoy her oppies. Now we see Shen back at his coffee shop thinking how George didn't visit him recently and how he has important information to give him now about the Tranquil Tongue cult so he can stop them before they sacrifice everyone. He also remembers how Aina recently told him that they will be summoning Lord of Ashes tonight and how she mentioned something about some dark fruit but Shen has no idea what this dark fruit is. 
Then his customer approaches Shen, asking for his attention, as she is explaining and complaining about her best friend, to which Shen responds that if they really are best friends, they should be able to talk about their problems and fix them easily, as he tells her he's about to close the coffee shop for today because it's getting late, and this girl gets a bit shy, thanks Shen and runs out. He looks at the time and realizes it's the 11th hour of the day, a time period when the Lord of Ashes can be summoned, as he mentally prepares for this summoning. But even after midnight passes, he didn't get summoned, thinking if something bad might have happened to Aina or the cult she belongs to. Now we go back an hour earlier in the past, in the summoning room of Chaos Ashes cult, as they approach the blondie doctor from earlier parts of this manhua, as we see him being dead and the cult leader asking what has happened to him and what's the cause of his death. Cult members are shocked too, as one of them reports that he saw a member of the Tranquil Tongue cult kill this blondie boy in front of his own eyes. The cult leader then looks at Aina and admires her ability to remain calm in a situation like this, especially since she is so young, but bros, let's be real, we all know what he is admiring about Aina. He then starts preaching and praising Lord of Ashes, saying that once again he will give them power and make their cult the strongest in the world, how two months ago he honored them by answering their summons and how tonight they'll summon him again and feel this honor once again, because tonight's tribute will be the high priest, as we see this poor fellow getting suffocated, his eyes rolling back into his skull as he falls dead on the floor, leaving cult members shocked because they didn't realize what just happened. But the cult leader says how this is the sacrifice they needed to pay in order to gain power from Lord of Ashes and use this power to stop the Tranquil Tongue cult. As the door slams open and another cult scout runs in, yelling on top of his lungs how the guards of this place got killed, some are straight up missing and how their defense has fallen, but they still don't know who did all of this, which makes fear run through the other followers of this cult. They need to run away quickly now as some black robed people ordered the cult leader to take them to safety and these guys are the rich people donating money to this cult to watch the summoning processes I guess. Now cult leader orders his followers to escort these people to safety near the Thames river as he grabs Aina and orders her to come with him since he has to teach her a lot and how her first lesson starts tonight. Aina asks where is he taking her and the cult leader answers by saying they need to find the messenger. Suddenly, blast waves pierce the walls, hitting cult members and leaving Aina grabbing her chest in pain as she suddenly starts levitating, probably thanks to those big balloons she has. Now we see her in a dark dimension where she calls for the Lord of Ashes as she hears words Go find the messenger. Now after regaining consciousness, we see her lying underneath a huge rubble that fell on her but didn't kill her because her body turned into superhuman type body thanks to the remolding process done to her earlier in the chapters. Which bros, I didn't realize at first, but you pointed it out that this process was basically injecting coffee into her veins. So you think you're a coffee addict? I bet you've never done this. <laughs> now, Aina realizes that her bones are broken, but luckily she's still alive. She starts wiggling out and manages to break free, but we see a chopped off hand grabbing her own arm as she realizes that this is all that's left of the cult leader. She leaves this place and decides to follow the path that the insignia on her back is leading her on. As she's running away, we can hear screams of surviving cult members who are still slowly dying because they are getting crushed by the rubble that fell on them. Now we go back to Shen at the coffee shop, who's wondering if the anti-magic bureau started hunting down the Chaos Ashes cult, as he also wonders whether Aina's safe or not. We also see a cat sleeping by his leg, which he recently let come in in the coffee shop. 
he decides to go to sleep since it's too late now for the summoning to happen as we see Aina reaching the front of his coffee shop and fainting just before entering in it. As she falls on the floor, we see some hooded people on rooftops nearby commenting how they need to finish Aina off before the sunrise and how they belong to the cult called the Silent Stinger and that if the guy who works in the coffee shop tries to stop them from killing Aina off, they will have to kill him as well. As we pan over and see Aina lying on the floor, but not hurt since she landed on those big pillows, as the cat from the coffee shop approaches her as if it's trying to defend her from the members of the cult of the silent stinger. The cat then meows at these cult members as they start admiring how cute it is, but focus up saying that they have an important task at hand and can't afford to get distracted right now. Suddenly, an immense aura starts radiating from the coffee shop, leaving these cultists mesmerized as they start yelling how the shopkeeper emits this heavy aura and it's a mix of two different exterior lords and they don't know who this person is. Suddenly, the cat starts transforming as well, becoming the lizard boy from earlier and after seeing our beloved lizard boy, these cultists get frozen in fear. They realize that the lizard boy is one of the servants of the Lord of Ashes because its body radiates with heat so strong that the rain can't even touch its body because it evaporates before. All of them start running away thinking how they can survive this monster because it has to be slow due to the size, it has, but boy they were wrong. Lizard boy quickly dashes chasing them, swallowing one alive piercing the other one as we see another guy thinking that he might survive this because lizard boy decided to chase two people who went opposite direction of him but suddenly lizard boy appears in front of him as well slicing him in half. The last surviving cultist goes hiding behind the building but our lizard boy finds him easily and quickly finishes him off too. Now we go back to Aina, who's still lying unconscious in the rain as the heat from Lizard Boy wakes her up and the first thing she sees is its mouth going towards her to consume her as well and she gets scared, runs away and after getting cornered, Lizard Boy charges at her and she extends her arm and yells at him to stop as the insignia on her back lights up and starts burning Lizard Boy alive. Aina gets surprised, realizing that she possesses this kind of power. She realizes that this flame she just used is the flame that Lord of Ashes himself used to burn 20 huge worlds in the past and how this flame is the legendary flame that will burn all the living things and return them to ashes. As we see our poor lizard boy burning to death, Aina focuses up on trying to keep the flames active until she finishes him off completely. But before doing so, she faints and lizard boy approaches her and we see that he has sentient thoughts as he thinks that Aina is a person chosen by Lord of Ashes, but that she is fatally wounded now and will die soon if not treated and he turns into the cat and just as every cat, starts walking away because it's none of his problems. Shen wakes up from hearing screaming noises and as he goes out to see what's happening, he notices Aina lying unconscious, thinking that the anti-magic bureau attacked her and that's why she couldn't summon him earlier this night and that is why she is wounded right now. He picks her up, telling her that she'll be fine because he'll save her now as he carries her into his house. After entering the house, we can hear him saying, I'm doing this to save her life, I'm doing this to save her life, I'm doing this to save her life, as we realize that he took off her clothes and has blood running out of both of his nostrils. Fun fact bros, in Japanese, when they get a nosebleed from getting aroused like this, they have a phrase for this, which goes, Hana jigaderu hodoi, which basically means I have a nosebleed, but not any kind of nosebleed, but this kind of nosebleed. Now, as he continues to inspect her body thoroughly, to save her and not because there is any other reason of course, he sees that her wounds have healed completely, leaving him confused. It's a new day and Aina wakes up feeling much better and realizing that she lost her consciousness in front of the coffee shop where the messenger of Lord of Ashes works. 
that is Shen, we see an image from last night where she was crying and thanking Shen for saving her and him having a nosebleed because of how hard he worked to save her life. She also realizes she's been completely healed and thinks that this is messenger that has healed her with his powers. She goes to the coffee shop and thanks him for saving her and we see Shen with huge black bags under his eyes because he got no sleep last night and Aina asks him if he's okay and he answers that it's not a big deal as his face looks like he's been dug up from the grave. Aina thinks to herself how even though this messenger is powerful, he still needs sleep and also food to eat. Now we learn that Shen spent the last night completely awake, guarding Aina from the monster he thought attacked her, Aww. and this morning he also went to the library again to learn the information that Byron has left him there about the cult, and lastly this morning he went to the anti-magic bureau to report the information he got from Byron. And after returning back to the coffee shop, he wanted to prepare breakfast for Aina, but nearly died while doing so. Now while he and Aina are having breakfast, he asks her to tell him all the details about what happened last night. And after listening to her story, Shen realizes that the monster she describes is the one he got from Shen and gets completely scared because it ran away. Now Aina asks Shen about her cult, saying that they got obliterated last night and how if this cult doesn't exist, then the orphanage from where she originally is from will get closed as well because it's getting financed by the cult, so that's why she wants to do all that's in her powers to preserve this cult and how she will do her best to stop the human sacrifices as well that the cult is doing right now. So she does want to preserve and improve the cult but she feels as if she alone is not capable enough to do so and Shen then comforts her saying that she's been through a lot as he looks at her and thinks how she's still so young but has grown so much already. Mm? He remembers her from the time he was first summoned and now, thinking that her mental growth is definitely amazing and so rare in people to find. While he's thinking all of this, the cat, that's actually lizard boy shapeshifted, approaches them and Aina admires how cute it is and asks for its name and Shen says it's Cola, telling Aina to pet the cat and how he'll go to get some sleep now. As Aina reaches for the cat, after Shen left, it shapeshifts its head back to the original of the lizard boy, leaving Aina petrified as she screams, scaring Shen in the other room, so he goes back to check what's going on and he sees Aina in the corner of the room, crying and saying how the cat suddenly became super scary. Shen a bit confused, thinks that maybe this cat tried scratching Aina and that's why Aina got scared and tells the cat that if it hurts Aina in any way, he'll be eating a cat cake tonight. Aina thinks so Shen probably knows this is Lizard Boy shapeshifted into cat, so it probably won't hurt her now after it received this order from the messenger of the Lord of Ashes. But the cat looks at Aina in a scary cute way and Aina gets scared again, grabbing Shen's hand and saying she'd like to come to his room with him. As she gets close to him, he starts blushing, saying that she can come with him and maybe read some books he has in his room. I just want to ask for a moment of silence bros for our fallen comrade who failed to make a move. <laughs> now we go back to George and the samurai girl, I forgot the name because she had two names, I'm sorry, and as they're walking down the city, George is commenting how Shen truly knows so much since he delivered the information about the tranquil call to them this morning, saying that he must be so powerful that all of this is just a game for him, as the samurai girl calls George a grandpa and tells him that he should stop praising Shen so much because the information he gave them isn't that special and there isn't that much of it in the first place. 
George explains how even though they didn't get much information, this is the only information the Anti-Magic Bureau has about the Tranquil Tongue, and how they're going to his coffee shop right now to ask him to assist them more with taking down this cult. After going in, we see Su Ling, I remembered her name, we see Su Lin looking at the menu and trying to restrain herself from ordering as much food as the last time because now she will split the bill with George and it's not his treat this time. While we see George getting annoyed at the cat because the cat stares at him ominously because the cat is lizard boy that George almost killed the last time they fought. Shen brings them coffees and asks why they came today and George explains that the Anti-Magic Bureau will attack the Tranquil Tongue tonight, saying that he never expected this cult to be so powerful and asks Shen if he personally would like to come help them with this attack. Shen immediately declines, thinking to himself that he'd get killed if he actually went with them, and as the flames surround him, he threatens them and tells them that they shouldn't be too greedy mortals. And after Su Ling sees the flames of Lord of Ashes, she gets worked up because she has some bad blood with Lord of Ashes but we don't know much about it now, but George thinks that she's still too young to handle this aura and that's why she wants to attack Shen, as he grabs her by her back, lifts her up and apologizes to Shen for being greedy, saying they will leave now. Shen gets confused thinking why did Su Ling just want to kill him now and as George leaves with her, Aina comes from the back asking if the air is clear for her to come out now. Shen says everything is fine and how it's best for Aina to stay at the coffee shop for some time thinking that a lot of people will die tonight and she'll be safe with him here. As he gets excited thinking about, not that he's gonna have a girl like Aina stay with him for a couple of days, but thinking about how pulling the strings of these people around him is such a wonderful experience. And bros, I finally understand it now. This is not Mr. Lin from the alternate universe, this is actually Inky's backstory. It has to be. Now, we see battle between Tranquil Tongue and Anti-Magic Bureau happening as one of the Tranquil Tongue cultists is fighting George, thinking that if he manages to kill George, who's one of the strongest in the Anti-Magic Bureau now, the rest will probably disperse in fear as well because their strongest fighter has fallen. Now we see George thinking how even though the Anti-Magic Bureau attacked this cult suddenly and it should have been a surprise for them to get attacked like this, they are still fighting as they have prepared for the Anti-Magic Bureau's attack and the way George thinks they are prepared is because they have summoned so many monsters in advance, used many defensive trap spells and even attacked Anti-Magic Bureau investigators couple of nights ago. And all of these realizations make George understand that there must be a mole working in the Anti-Magic Bureau. George realizes that they've used a spell that prevents regular people from coming in and thinks how the men he has here need to find the sacrificial location of where this spell was originally cast so they can stop it and more of their regular men from Anti-Magic Bureau might join the attack as well. George wonders about the leader of this cult, whose name is Yare Villard, and still doesn't understand his motives behind all of these actions, as we get to learn that George and him used to be friends before, with Byron as well. Now we see one of the monsters that's partaking in this battle, fighting a girl, and as the girl jumps from the building, slicing the monster's arm clean off, we learn that the girl is actually Su Lin. As the monster charges at her from behind now, she quickly turns and points her katana at the monster, yelling downward. And we see this monster getting trapped in a purple zone, as Su Ling stares at it, intensifying her spell and crushing the monster to death. Now we learn that in order for Su Ling to cast this spell, she needs to sacrifice some of her bones at random and that even her skull can get broken in the process and lucky for her, she didn't lose her skull now but just got a broken rib. As she takes another step to continue fighting in this battle, a cultist member suddenly appears, shooting her with his tiny metal piece launcher because I guess guns is too advanced of a word 
for this world and Su Ling manages to survive this bullet shot due to injecting ancient deep sea blood in her veins which is required of all the investigators in the anti-magic bureau to do and this blood allows her body to reach a higher tier giving her more strength and immunity to all damage from normal non-magical weapons. She takes out her katana again and rushes at this cultist, missing him with her first attack, but she quickly turns around and charges back at him before he manages to turn around as well and as she flies towards him she manages to cut his hand off. She cuts him with the blade yet again and we can see a monster like mass emerging from his mouth as he explodes leaving behind a huge monster worm like creature. Su Lin again extends her katana and casts the downward spell but this time she doesn't finish this monster off with the spell casted just once. So she casts it again and we see blood coming out of her mouth as the monster gets crushed to death this time. Su Lin realizes she has lost another set of ribs and luckily her skull or more important bones in her body are still untouched. She injects a special type of blood in her arm allowing her to heal her bones as the rest of the members of the anti-magic bureau with George leading them approach her as he tells Su Lin that he realized ever since he first met her that she is a solo fighter but he comments that they are partners and need to fight together otherwise it might get too dangerous and she'll get herself killed. She interrupts him saying that they don't have time to chit chat now and how they need to hurry up and find the high priest of this cult to finish him off once and for all and this leaves George surprised sarcastically calling her captain thinking to himself how newcomers definitely don't know how to show respect when needed. He orders his men to follow Su Lin, saying that the strongest investigator of the anti-magic bureau is currently on a business trip and says how if he was here now, all of this would already be over with way less casualties as he comments how the leader of this cult is a guy so powerful that he's almost unkillable and George thinks how the only way for him to maybe kill off this cult leader is to use his second blade which name is Absolute Death. Now we go to Yares hideout and he's the leader of Tranquil Tongue cult currently as he thinks how this entire town is so special that if he sacrifices all of it to the exterior lord he will summon this lord easily. As we see a huge number of cultists behind him, he starts saying the summoning words and magic steps appear underneath his feet as he starts climbing upwards. And as he continues to chant the summoning cantation, he passes through the rooftop of the building as he continues walking upwards towards the sky. And we see a huge magical swirl appear in the clouds and many of the investigators of the anti-magic bureau fall down on the ground because of the pain they feel due to this summoning. As George comments how the sacrifices for the summoning have already begun and how only a couple of them can currently move freely as we see his face covered in fear as he comments asking if everything in there is related to this lord that they are trying to summon. We see the swirl in the clouds again as black masses start coming out of it. As all of this is happening, we go back to Shen's coffee shop and see him taking a nap with his mouth so wide open it looks like he's trying to swallow the world. We see the lizard boy still in the form of a cute kitty, thinking how someone is currently summoning an exterior lord and as Shen suddenly vanishes, lizard boy jumps in fear because he didn't expect something like this to happen. Aina approaches Shen asking if he's still sleeping but she sees that he's gone. Now we go back to the battlefield again and as Yare is still flying and trying to summon this exterior lord, 
George looks at Yare and thinks how he's met all the three conditions needed for him to cast his blade spell and the dagger appears in his hand and he throws it at Yare. Yare sees the blade flying towards him but doesn't react as the blade pierces through him but Yare manages to survive as George thinks how Yare was too far away for the blade to strike him with the full force and that's why he managed to survive. We see Su Lin ready her katana now as George realizes that all he can hear is silence right now and as he looks up he sees a new man appear that is known as the silent singer and looks like a man in a business suit with a skull mask on his face. We then see this man falling down as we learn that this is actually Shen and he gets scared because he's falling down but tries to calm himself down by thinking that if he turns his body to mist before hitting the ground he'll not only survive but survive with no damage taken at all. But before he continues falling further a floating magic circle stops his fall which calms him down as he sees Yare also kneeling on one of these floating circles and praising him saying how they offer a great sacrifice to this lord and what they ask in return from this lord is to give them the eternal state of tranquil mind. Shen realizes that Yare is not talking out loud but using telepathy to communicate with him right now and thinks how this is actually quite befitting to someone belonging to a cult of tranquil tongue. Shen remembers what he learned about this exterior lord known as the silent singer and remembers that this lord symbolizes winter and gives his followers a stable and everlasting peace which is basically what Yare is asking from him right now. He also remembers how he read that what these cultists pursue is not actually death itself but rather approval and acceptance from the silent singer making his followers have no desire and just serve under him for eternity. Shen thinks that what they want is no pain, no struggle, no resentment and no aspirations but how they also want none of the positive emotions like happiness and love as well and he thinks that living that kind of life is pointless. He looks at Yare who's definitely not of a tranquil mind right now as he looks as if he's going crazy out of excitement after meeting his lord as Shen picks up the act of the lord again saying that he accepts Yare's offer and realizes that if he accepts the sacrificial offer he also gets an obligation to respond to their request but the catch is that he doesn't have to accept their request and he doesn't as he tells Yare he declines their request and this leaves Yare in shock. Now Shen is making a backup plan thinking that if Yare turns against him he can use mystization to avoid getting any damage but also figures out that when he was in his coffee shop and released a tiny bit of his aura even George wasn't brave enough to make a move against him as he thinks that the aura he's releasing right now is so powerful that there's nobody alive on this earth right now that would dare attack him. He also thinks it's a good thing that he can actually reject their request because it would be terrible if he had to accept it now meaning that the entire population of this city including Aina as well would die. He tells Yare how no matter what sacrifice they offer he will never grant them the eternal tranquil mind and this makes Yare so angry as he starts telepathically screaming asking why so much so that he loses his mind and consciousness and because of it stops casting the floating circle spell as he starts falling down towards the ground. Shen gets surprised that Yare just fainted now but thinks how even if Yare dies from falling now he deserves it for being so evil and trying to sacrifice everyone in this city. 
he decides to wait completely still before the summoning ends and sends him back to his coffee shop, but suddenly he starts hearing thoughts of all the cultists as they begin to beg in emotional agony, asking why doesn't he want to grant them the peace of the eternal tranquil mind. This overwhelms Shen, but he realizes that summoning will end soon, so he won't have to listen to them anymore as the summoning circle appears and teleports him back to his coffee shop. Now we see George thinking how their lord just left without granting them their wish and request and says that this attempt was pitiful of them because humans can never understand how these lords think if humans only use their perspective, human perspective, to understand it. George realizes that he can hear the sound once again as he turns around to Su Ling and orders her to start arresting these cultists because the threat of their lord is gone now. She runs away quickly to fulfill her task as we see George ordering his other men to wait here because even though this lord is gone, the high priest of this cult is still very dangerous so it would be best for them to wait here. As George is looking for Yare, he thinks so even if Yare managed to survive, he must be gravely wounded and after finding him lying on the floor and looking 100 years older than 10 minutes ago, George says goodbye old friend and as he tries to finish him off, realizes that this isn't Yare at all, thinking that maybe the information that Shen gave him was wrong, as we see Shen reappearing in the coffee shop. Now bros, a quick explanation, on the photo where we saw George and Yare, Byron was also with them, meaning three of them used to be friends, and when Shen ordered Byron to betray the tranquil tongue, Byron thought how he could never betray his old friend, but how he will do it because of his daughter now. And this old friend he could never betray was Yare. And he gave Shen information about the cult, but it was probably wrong information and Shen gave George wrong information because George just realized that this priest they found is not actually Yare but someone else. Thank you so much for watching the video bros, if you want to find out what happens next, be sure to subscribe with the bell notifications turned on to see when the next part goes live, stay awesome bros and peace!